Okay, hi, I'm John Glynn. I'm going to be looking at using the gradient tool, which is in the toolbox on the left hand side of my monitor. And I've already got it highlighted. You all notice that there are certain aspects of the gradient tool which are at the top of my monitor along the toolbar. But these options might be at the bottom of your monitor depending on what version of Photoshop you are using. OK, so I would like to have a picture here, which is of a landscape, and I'm going to make this guy bluer, because at the moment it is tonally grey. So to do that, um, I'm going to, uh, well, I'll show you what you don't want to do to start with. I've clicked on the gradient tool, and if I put my mouse over the top of my picture, I get crosshairs, and if I were to drag it down, I would end up with a picture like that and that's because the top option I've got here which is black to white it covers the whole photograph so I'm going to undo that go to my history palette on the right hand side I'm going to be using the history palette uh, the layers palette and the navigator palette um, if you're wanting to know what I'm going to do and to pick up the palettes you'll do that from window okay anything that's ticked is open so next thing to do is um, change the, the settings of my my um, gradient tool and the gradient I don't want it to go from black to white I want it to go from uh, a shade of color in this case it's black to a checkerboard a checkerboard means that it will be uh, transparent so if I do the same thing now there you have the look. Now you could say, oh, that's OK. It's done. I've got a gradient. It goes from black to black to uh, to grey. I'd rather it being a colour. So I could do a colour and just go to my colour palette options in my toolbox. It's black at the moment. I will click on the black square, pick up a colour. I can choose blue. Notice how I'm selecting the blue here. So the current colour is black, new colour is blue, click the OK. It now becomes blue in my box on the left hand side in the toolbox. It's now blue to uh, transparent in the gradient options at the top. I can drag down my picture there and, and that's the, the look I get. But I want a bit more control over this look to make it a little bit more natural. OK, so I'm going to change this and be a bit more controlling as to what I can do and where my gradient is going to be. Um, I'll show you why again if I undo the gradient tool and I just said, right, let's do a big gradient. You can notice that it actually goes over the top of any buildings and that would be a little bit artificial. So I'm going to take that out. And before, therefore, before I actually use the gradient tool, I'm going to go up the toolbox and go to a quick selection. So I'm going to select this guy using the quick selection brush. Now, I've taken my brush onto my sky. If it's the wrong size, you can resize that brush by using the square brackets on your keyboard. The right-hand square bracket makes the brush bigger, the left-hand one is smaller. And holding down the left mouse key, you can drag and select and as you drag you can see that it picks up contrast it's looking for contrast between uh, various parts of your photo and I'm looking for the sky however uh, you'll also notice that in this particular picture the top of the church and the sky background are very very similar so therefore it hasn't picked up any contrast because tonally the white of the roof of that church and the white sky are too similar in tone. So for me to actually be more accurate in the selection, what I'm going to do is zoom in on that picture and and be more accurate in my selection. So to zoom in, I hold down the control key on my keyboard, do the plus sign on my keyboard and I can zoom in. Now, navigator. I've got a navigator option on the right hand side. It's another palette. You pick that up for window and I've got a little red box. I can drag that round and I can zoom in and out more by using the slider underneath if I wish. Now my brush gets bigger as I zoom in on a uh, on my picture 
because my brush size is related to my magnification on the screen, as I zoom in, the brush will effectively become bigger. So I can make it smaller again by using the left hand square bracket on my keyboard. Now, it's got a plus sign in it. That means I'm adding to the selection. I want to take away from the selection. Therefore, I'm going to hold the Alt key down on my keyboard and I get a minus sign and I can push up. Now, if it doesn't work for any reason or you're finding it's not that accurate, the at the top here, uh, if you look at the top of my monitor, on the left-hand side, I've got a plus and a minus and I could jump between the two and you'll find that somewhere on your monitor, maybe at the bottom, depending on what version of Photoshop you've got. And if I just hold it down, you see how it's a plus sign, it will click and select more info to remove it. Hold down the Alt key and push it back. And I can remove the selections that I've made. I could be a bit more accurate if I wished by making the brush a bit smaller, but it's fine for this occasion. And I'm now going to go to the Select and Mask option. So the reason I'm going to do the Select and Mask is to soften the edges of my tool and therefore give a nicer looking finish to the to my selection. Otherwise it will look like all I've done is cut it out. So I'm going to do Select and Mask and soften the edges. I can do that through the Smooth option. If I smooth the edges you'll notice that the edges become smoother. To see this, I've got a white mask on here. If I go up to View in this box, there's a little drop-down menu, I can do Overlay, it could be in red. I could make it uh, black on white or on black. So it's up to you how you view it. I'll do it onto white. And all it is is to help you see the edges, so that if you're finding the edges are, are harsh or sharp, then that's how it looks to you when you do the work. And generally speaking, you want to soften it so that it isn't too obvious that we're, we're doing the work on our picture. And I can even feather it. Feathering will be more soft than smooth. So a small amount of feathering might help. Uh, it depends on what you're using for your picture and then you'll say OK. Come back to my photograph and I've still got the marquee. I wish to zoom out a bit so I'm going to do that using a control and minus. Control key there we are and the minus and I can now see the picture with my selection and now what I'm going to do is click on my uh, gradient tool. And there's the gradient tool highlighted in in the toolbox and I'm now going to also create a new layer. So I'm going to my layers palette and I'm going to create a new layer but a blank layer so that it's an empty layer. And now when I go to my picture and I've got my crosshairs and I drag down the gradient will only work on the sky and effectively behind the building and depending on how big I'll redo that gradient depending on how big I drag the line down will depend on how big I wish the gradient to be big gradient a long draw down and if I wish it to blend in more neatly than it is at the moment, I've got choices. I've got the word normal. You'll see normal at the top here. If I drop down normal, I can do overlay. This is all in my layers palette. And it can look a little bit nicer. Different ways of showing how the picture will look. Uh, you've got lighter colour. Just different ways of showing how the blue will come through. Overlay is often chosen for this sort of thing. But you might want to try other options to see how it looks on your particular photograph. OK. Another choice, I'll go back to overlay. There we have overlay. Another choice would be normal. And on the right hand side of normal, I've got opacity. 
and I can reduce the opacity and then put in as much blue or as little amount of blue as I wish for the effect I'm looking for and I can then say OK let's have a look at that if I turn off the little magic eye in the layer palette next to my layer I can see it as it was before I did the work and after I did the work so now you can compare the two okay now the other option in uh, in the I'm just going to take this all out and go back a stage because I'm going to show you something else you can do in using gradient tools is in the gradient you have other forms of gradient and we have up here if you look at the top of my picture again in the gradient toolbar I've got other gradient options uh, just to make sure it's all working it should be um, try this one and for some reason the gradient is no longer switched on just, just go all the way back because it might be easier okay there we are let's try this one there we are that does a little star this one will do a little circle and you do have other ones as well which will give other other effects if I do this one it will look somewhat like that I'll, I'll do it slightly differently actually so that you get that kind of banding effect by using that one and this one is a very strange one because it gives a straight lines okay so the different sort of finishes depending on what effect you're wanting generally speaking though we are looking for a smooth gradient and if I go back and go to this normal gradient and drag from the left or from the right you can see also that you can get a gradient from that side as well okay so it's a matter of using the gradient tool it's handy to do it in a layer because in a layer you can do the blending which you can't do easily any other way so I can do normal and overlay and now I've got a fairly reasonable looking blue sky to my grey image okay so hopefully that will give you an overview of the gradient tool and let you have a go thank you very much for watching